He's David Fatty from the Golf Channel and, of course, CBS, following Tiger Woods yesterday. And I know it's going to shout Tiger's back, and I keep saying when he wins a major, then I will officially announce Tiger is back. But what you saw, David, over the weekend, what's different about Tiger now than, say, last year or the year before? Well, um, well good morning, Dunny. Hi, buddy. Um, and, uh, you know, welcome to New Orleans and all the rest. But incidentally, I was at Media Day last year in a kilt. <laughs> And uh, I went over the entire show uh, on a zip line, and uh, I believe there are still several children in therapy because of it. Did you have anything um, on under the kilt? Oh, there's. Uh, I was traditional, traditional. Uh, whatever was on underneath my kilt was uh, it was it was <laughs> painted plaid. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, not a big job, I can assure you. But uh, Tiger, uh, not a know, lot of paint f- needed for that. Not, not really. No, no, tiny brushes. Right. Um, it, you know, the first three rounds, um, uh, and then of course, you know, there was the last round that took as long as the first three rounds. Um, yesterday was the single slowest uh, experience on a golf course I have ever witnessed. It was like watching somebody else's toenail fungus grow. <laughs> it was just awful, absolutely awful. Um, and he's got this lead, which is a hard enough thing to have uh, at the best of times. You know, an eight-shot lead, you, most people, uh, normal human beings, really can only think about ways to lose. From there, it's very difficult to be aggressive. So when you've got to wait for 10 minutes on every shot, and I'm not one to, you know, to make excuses for Tiger. He doesn't need uh, to do that. He played like an idiot uh, over the last few holes. But he played so beautifully up until that point that he could afford to play like an idiot and still win by four. Um, he, he was showing signs earlier in the week of, uh, I said to him uh, earlier in the week, I said, you remind me of someone. Um, and he said, what? I said, you, a few years ago. He said, yeah, I, you know, I, you know, I feel better. I feel, I said, well, you, we're walking differently. You know, your attitude seems different. You know, you just, uh, you know, you remind me of, of the way you used to be. And uh, he, he did. He played like that for, for the most part of the week. And, and I thought one of the most telling things, Dan, was when he did hit it sideways, and, and he did fairly often, he found a way to fix himself. Yeah. And, and that's what he was always great at uh, in his heyday around the turn of the century um, when he was on that rampage, which, you know, I don't think uh, anyone in our generation or our children's generation will ever see golf played like that again. Uh, but he was able to fix himself in, in mid-round, which in golf is virtually impossible. But he did it two or three times this week, and I think it's a, an ominous sign for uh, anybody that's playing golf for a living. But if you look at Tiger, and I was curious about this, does he care about being loved? Yes, he does. He does. Um, you know, he, he didn't just want to win yesterday. He wanted to win emphatically. He wanted to win by 8 or 10 or, or, or something like that, and uh, you know, I, I questioned him briefly. You know, we were crashing off the air. Uh, I only had the chance to talk to him very briefly. Um, you, you know that if, if four shots, you know, playing the way he did was okay. And he said, yeah, sure. So, you know, a W is a W. But it, it wasn't the W that he wanted. Um, and, he, yeah, he does. He, he uh and I'll be honest with you, you know, people turned out yesterday in San Diego, either, you know, the unemployment rate there is 100%, or, you know, people do love him. Well, I, I, I just watched and I wondered, because the, the edges are still a little bit rough with him. I know that he wants to win, and I admire him for that. If he's not a nice guy or good guy, you know, I, okay, I'm fine with that. I'm just curious from his perspective, if he now sort of realizes what he had, what he lost, and what's important to him as he moves on in the latter part of his uh, career here. I think so. I, I think we're seeing him evolve into more of what the rest of us would, would consider to be a, a sort of a human-like uh, creature. <laughs> Where I mean, you've got to remember that, that most people um, who become famous at anything have a, a period of... Uh, where they grow into that fame and it becomes harder and harder for them to to be uh, you know warm and fuzzy or touchable or open to the public uh, because if, if if you give somebody something you're surrounded all of a sudden and then you, you know you have to be the bad guy at some point um, and say no more of this you know everybody get away from me tiger went from uh, not to 100 miles an hour he went from relative obscurity in the amateur game uh, as good as he was, it's still the amateur game, to bang, winning the Masters by 12. 
and all of a sudden he was the most famous athlete on the planet. It happened overnight, and and he had to have this cast iron uh, shroud around him, uh, you know, where he couldn't make eye contact. Or uh, and you know, it, with Greg Norman, it was confused for arrogance. Uh, with Nick Price, you know, he was one of the very few that, that got away with. Uh, you know, being regarded as, you know, Mr. Nice Guy, you know, uh, who, who could still be number one. I mean, Faldo was so single-minded and, and you know, full steam ahead, you know, with blinkers on, blinders. Mm-hmm. Um, Tiger's the same way. And, and uh, in private, he, he's funny and personable and warm. Uh, he's a very generous person. But he, right now, you know, he's still playing the part of Tiger Woods, um, who is this sort of... Uh, unbreakable, uh, untouchable uh, kind of image. Well, I understand why he does it, because that's what made him Tiger, and he has to, I mean, he's focused to pass Jack Nicholas. He knows that everybody's waiting to see if he's going to be able to do that. I get that. We're talking to David Faddity in a new season of Faddity on the Golf Channel. Uh, let's see, February 25th at 10 Eastern will be the uh, first yeah, episode there. That happen? Uh, um, Super Bowl growing up in Northern Ireland, how big it, uh, was it when you were growing up? When I was growing up, um, unnoticeable, I'd say. You know, people didn't even know what was going on. Now it's an entirely different, uh, it's an entirely different story. Uh, American football has become more and more popular um, all around the world, uh, and with the, uh, you know, the European teams uh, that they have now, um, it's, uh, you know, basketball and, and baseball are a long, long way behind. I mean, they're virtually people don't even know, know that that's going on. Um, but uh, American football has become a very popular game. Well, let's say Joe Montana walked down the street or Peyton Manning. They're in Northern Ireland. They're, they're in Dublin. Yeah. Anybody stopping to uh, they'll recognize them? Yeah, most of the Americans. Oh, so nobody from Ireland is going to stop them. Hard, hardly anybody I would have thought. Um, I mean, there'd be a few. Uh, but uh, they would still be uh, pretty anonymous. If uh, this Is this a, the passing of the uh, baton? I, I can't believe Tiger's doing this with Rory. I know there's a partnership here with Nike, but it, it's almost symbolic in a way that Tiger is saying the next generation of Nike and equipment and golf is going to be Rory McIlroy. I just can't see Tiger ready to say, you know, here, Tiger, or here, Rory, you take over. You know, I'll step aside. Well, no, I mean, I, I think he's, perfectly likely to say here Rory you take over if you can um there'll be no stepping aside because people have really short memories Danny you know I mean, they forget what happens when Tiger Woods plays well I mean he played like a a, a wounded marmot uh, over the last uh, 18 holes yesterday and he, he wins by four uh he, if he plays well nobody else can win not Rory not anybody and uh, he hasn't played well in the best part of four years. It's, it's going to happen. And uh, I'd be surprised looking at his attitude and the way he's swinging the club and uh, the way he coped with uh, an incredibly irritating day yesterday um, with, with the, the pace of play and, and the fact that it was freezing and, you know, you're stuck there on Monday and, you know, I mean, not that uh, I want anybody to feel too sorry for these guys. They're playing for a fortune. <laughs> Um, and it's golf, you know, it's still a diversion. But uh, I'd be surprised if he doesn't win five or six times this year. But how many majors? I think he'd win one anyway. Okay. You know, maybe more. Good to visit with you. Visit stay out of trouble, stay off your bike, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. I think a couple of those are unlikely, but I will talk to you soon. Thank you, David. Thank you. Every time David gets on his bike, he somehow ends up in a ditch, injured. Poor guy. CBS Golf Channel, David Ferretti.